Susan, welcome to Better Tech. Can you introduce yourself to our audience? Um, hi, Amna. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm Susan Olson. I'm a UX designer and I focus in the XR space, AR, VR, and MR. And my background is originally in 3D animation and visual effects. Then I went in on to be a UX designer and I've been doing UX design for about 12 years now. So a couple of years ago, because of my background in 3D, I became very interested in virtual and augmented reality and I have been focusing on that ever since. Okay. So in recent times, like we've, you've been working in this space, so how do you think design space has evolved over time with all these mixed reality technologies and products coming up? First of all, I think it's important to distinguish between AR, VR, and MR. What is XR? Uh, I think there's a lot of maybe confusion about that. And uh, so it's really just a matter of degree of immersion. Mm -hmm. So in virtual reality, the user is completely immersed in a fictitious made up world. In mixed reality, you have virtual elements that are completely made up, but they actually interact with the real world. And this is done by scanning, the headset will scan the area and it'll create geometry on the fly mm -hmm. of the objects in the space. And so that allows game engines with physics will allow the virtual objects to actually interact in the real world, that the real world can occlude the virtual objects, the virtual objects can occlude the real world. Uh, you can, you know, for instance, bounce a ball off of a table and it will behave as if it's in the real world. So that's mixed reality. So you're seeing the real world and the, and the virtual objects at the same time. And then augmented reality is simply placing a layer of augmentation over the real world. So that's more likely with like navigation on your phone. Um, you can see that in Google where there's just a layer in the real world that helps you to, it, it augments, it provides additional information um, for navigation, for learning, for training, for um, emergency use. Yeah. So it's, it's like a, another layer. So XR is a term that encompasses all three. And that's more the term that's being used because we're seeing the lines between the three, as the technology evolves, the lines between the three are starting to blur. So uh, some examples would be uh, Google Glass is, was the first to come out and it was way ahead of its time and did not catch on for, from the consumer point of view, but it's still being used in industrial situations. That's more of an augmented reality where there's just a layer of information that is put on top of the world. And so it's used in a lot of industrial cases, again, with navigation, it helps people to find and locate things in a warehouse, or it's used for, uh, for example, uh, engineers to repair an airplane engine. That's obviously very complex with that added layer of information through the Google Glass, it makes the job easier. Uh, the, Holo, the HoloLens is a similar use case. It's very popular in industrial applications, but the HoloLens is a mixed reality headset. So that's gonna take it to another level and allow objects to actually interact in the space. And some good use cases of the Microsoft HoloLens is for example, NASA is using it to bring their scientists from around the world together in one space to collaborate on Mars. They actually simulate Mars in, in the mixed reality using all of their data from Mars. And then the scientists will meet together and discuss 
areas that they want to focus on and send the rovers to to get more information. Something like the Oculus, Oculus Rift, or even more so, I think the Oculus Quest, um, that's a headset, a fully immersive VR headset. And what's really great about the Oculus Quest is that it's the first headset to be untethered and it's gained a lot of popularity in the consumer market. And so that's been really exciting for us to see. Right. And so you mentioned all these distinctions and they're important and more so for designers. How can we relate conventional design to a 3D experience? So, um, so what's important for uh, creators to remember, designers and developers to remember is that um, the brain is very easily tricked and it doesn't understand the difference between a thought and reality. So in immersive experiences, brain, it's real and it's really uncanny how even low quality graphics can trick the brain into something being real. So there's safety needs to be really number one when you're designing and because now you are in the real world but you're either in a headset or even if you're just on your phone in an ar application the person is moving in space inside your application and they're and they're not just focused on the interface they also need to be aware of what's surrounding them and not trip over something or you know fall off a stair or whatever so there's a an increased responsibility to the designer to really consider the context of the use case and where the user might be using the application or the circumstances, the context in which they're using it and really think about the safety first. There's also um, an increased potential for dark patterns. You know, we talk about dark patterns on the web of getting people to um, you know, sign up for things that they maybe didn't realize they were signing up for and, you know, the unethical practice of that. Now, when we're talking about someone's um, understanding of reality, the opportunity for dark patterns is even more increased. So we need to really think the ethics around design need to become even more important. So how do you ensure interactivity? in an AR VR setup, right? Like same as being in a real life scenario. So to ensure interactivity, um, one of the things we use things like head gaze. So when a user know, we know when a user is looking at something by the position of the direction that they're looking. And so we can tell when something's being looked at. So if something's being looked at in the virtual world that's interactable, we can provide a visual or auditory clue that that's interactable. And so that is one way that we can ensure interactivity is by using good design principles of system communication and letting the user know what objects are interactable. Okay, makes sense. As a UI UX industry expert, do you believe in providing too much guidance or creating a minimalist environment which doesn't really overwhelm the user? So every situation and use case is different, but I never want to overwhelm the user in any use case. Um, the same principles of good UX apl still apply. However, because of the immersive nature, designers need to be even more mindful and the real challenge becomes designing interfaces that are natural to interact with as if they're in the real world. So for instance, um, you know, right now the common way of interacting with, you know, picking up something from the table is with the controller in VR, yep. you know, you, you grab it by pressing certain buttons or the trigger and then you pick it up. Um, so what we're really moving towards now is being able to actually reach out and pick it up with your hand. Um, so that would, be, that would be a more natural and intuitive way to interact with the world. And a lot of work is being done in that area right now. The Quest has allowed that to 
be possible because the Quest has the inside out tracking. And so it has cameras in the headset and it's able to understand and track your hands. And so a lot of work is being done in that area. One of the things that um, I'm working on is I co-founded with my partner, Rob Dongus from the University of Sydney, the XR research study. And we're looking at, we have a team of 22 people mm -hmm. and we're looking at 72 VR titles. And our goal is to record and analyze interaction patterns in VR to really, to catalog design patterns that have already been established and to look at what is successful and what is not and help to guide the industry forward in terms of what are successful interaction design patterns. Has, been, has that been a recent project that you've just taken up? Uh, that's something that we're involved in right now mm -hmm. that's in the works. Right. Yeah. Because we're looking at 72 different titles, it's, um, it's a long study. I love and that's what, yeah, that's why we have a big team working on it. Yeah, I can imagine. I just look forward to hearing more about your findings. Thank you. And so how different is the AR VR design process from the mobile or web design process exactly? So I think um, there's an analytical process that is common between all designing. And, you know, to understand the function of the thing that you're designing. What is, what is its purpose? What are you trying to achieve? What are the needs of the you know, user? And um, who is that user? You know, what is the context that they're going to be using it in? Those kinds of questions and, and the process of uncovering the answers, I think is common to all design. However, they're, the execution of an immersive experience is very different from mobile or web design. And, um, you know, the biggest difference that you're in physical 3D space, you have to consider the, the size of people's bodies, you know, everybody's going to have a different arm length, everyone's going to have a different height. And so the ergonomics of the design become really more important. And Certainly from going from a 2D space into uh, a 2D plane to 3D is completely different. So I think when designers went from print to web, there were definitely things that um, were different that they needed to adjust in terms of, you know, color space is different and, you know, you have interactivity now where you didn't have it before. Um, but the jump from 2D and mobile to immersive and 3D and interacting in the real world is, is a whole other dimension. Um, there's so many, you know, again, I talked about the safety and that's really important. That's another level. And the also, you know, some of the things we talked about before in terms of the ethics and the dark patterns uh, I think the need for collaboration is, is much more important because of the complexity of the technology. Designers need to, um, I think many designers like to have that feeling of ownership over their design. And I think they need to be willing to open up to collaboration and share that ownership because now you have people like, it's a little bit more like film and you know, a script needs to be written, you know, there's a whole nother level of uh, artists working. It's not just one designer, but you have lighting artists and modelers and animators. Yeah. Um, so it becomes a much more of a collaborative process. So if there is one piece of advice that you would give to new designers, what would it be? Uh, it would be to it would be that they need to look at their designs and experience their designs in 3D. So it's not something that you can just sketch on paper and get right. You need to get into a 3D environment um, as quickly as possible. And there's a lot of prototyping tools 
that allow designers to actually design in 3D. And that would be my advice is to get into those types of applications as early as possible. Okay. Yeah, so some of those would be um, something as simple as Google Blocks, uh, Tivori, T-V-O-R-I, the Tilt Brush, all, all of these, anything that allows you to like draw and create in 3D would be great options for any designer, new or experienced. Okay. So I understand that right now AR VR is an emerging field, it's evolving, and a lot of developments are taking place in the design space regarding this technology. So just to wrap up, do you think that VR will last in design once the hype passes? I don't believe there's a hype. I think that um, we're moving into a whole new future mm -hmm. that um, something that we haven't talked about is spatial computing. And I really believe that where all of this is going is spatial computer computing, where the whole world is going to be alive with data and the internet is going to be the real world. And um, that's where I really believe that AR, MR, and VR are going to converge into one, and it's just going to be a matter of degree of the occlusion. We're already seeing that with um, the Vario headset, which allows you to go from VR to MR, um, and the Nreal glasses are doing the same thing. The Nreal glasses are spatial computing glasses that uh, they're, it's not a headset, they're just glasses. And they are originally designed for mixed reality. And then um, they're now uh, adding in a layer of occlusion that allows it to be more like a virtual reality space. And um, if you want more information about this, um, I also work with the OpenAR Cloud. And you can go to openarcloud.org and this organization is dedicated to, it's a grassroots, all-volunteer uh, organization, and it's dedicated to making sure that the spatial web is open and accessible to all, and they're working on technology that will allow different companies' technologies to be interoperable. Sounds interesting. I'll definitely look it over. And if you're looking for um, a vision of like what this spatial computing might look like, um, you can read the book, The Rainbow's End. It does a very good job of uh, giving a vision of what that might look like when you know, the whole world gets turned into data and we can have holograms you know, appear right before us. And Definitely sounds interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't believe there's a hype, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that this is where we're going and um, it's already being built. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. So thank you, Susan, for joining us. That wraps up our session for today. Okay. Thank you so much, Amma. I really appreciate it.